Hey, Meadows family. Hey. Um, we're excited to join you guys again. Um, and this week we're going to uh, continue looking at conflict. Um, two weeks ago now, I think it was, mm -hmm. uh, my parents, Kathy and Mark, um, shared the Vitamix story. And so we're going to use that and we're going to launch off into something that we've been talking about. And one of the things that we've been talking about is difference between good conflict and bad conflict. Mm -hmm. um, I know we've had our share of conflict. And so, Heather, you want to just kind of unpack what good conflict is? Yeah. So, difference between good conflict and bad conflict. For all the conflict avoiders out there, you might be thinking in your head, there's no such thing as good conflict. But there actually is. And good co conflict is conflict done well that actually benefits the relationship long term. And um, not all conflict is bad conflict if done well. So for example, um, bad conflict can often be um, similar to someone not taking out the trash. So if your kitchen just has the trash continuing to pile up, it's overflowing, the stench is getting around, and it is just not a pretty scenario, that is very similar to conflict building up and not done well and maybe bitterness is growing because the trash hasn't been taken out. Whereas if you do conflict well and it's just a more normal part of conversation that we have um, and it's done regularly, just like taking out the trash regularly, there isn't this stench that grows. And so that's just one picture of conflict done well that benefits the relationship long term might be more regular, but it's in pieces, smaller pieces, sometimes bigger pieces, and doesn't let bitterness grow. Um, so that's one aspect of conflict done well. And the second aspect is just the difference. I mean, one of the questions is, how do you do conflict well? The difference between me, if I'm frustrated with Drew, and there's a conflict in my mind, the difference between me making a blanket statement about his character in frustration or who he is or what he does compared to me choosing to bring up a circumstance that happened and sharing my feelings about that. So for example, the second way to do conflict well would be, um, which happens sometimes, but if I did this wrong, let's say there's a bag of bread and it's left on the counter, not that this ever happens, with um, it not tied up, so it's probably going to go stale. And so if I'm walking in and Drew was making a sandwich with the bread's there, you know, I could choose like in that moment to not do conflict well and accuse Drew of, Drew, you always leave the bread open. Does he always? No, he doesn't always. Um, and Drew, oh, why can't you just be more responsible? Making attacks on his character when really that's not what's, what's happening here. Instead, I could choose to do conflict well and say, Drew, Next time, um, when you use the bread, could you just put it back so that it doesn't land on my shoulders to do that? Um, that would be super helpful. Great way to just keep moving, but actually address the situation. On the flip side, which happens in our house, uh, Drew could tell you, let's say I happen to not clean out the drain in the shower and there's hair in the drain, which is very disgusting in his point of view for good reason. And Drew has never done this, but you know, bad conflict would be accusing me of Heather, you're just messy, you are um, sloppy, and it's just, it's disgusting, your hair is disgusting, and all these blanket statements instead of what he actually does in conflict well is he um, brought it up when it first came up an issue and said, hey Heather, when you're done showering, could you take out the drain hair? Because it's a little nasty for me to touch because it's usually this hair, not this hair. And um, that was great. And sometimes he's really gracious even when I forget. He just hands me the drain, <laughs> the, the cover, and I just take the hair off because I forgot and hand it back to him. And he's very gracious about that. So there's a difference between good conflict and bad conflict. Not all conflict is bad. Um, it can really help a relationship and help communication and help um, us feel understood, just like you heard from the Vitamix story and these stories as well. Uh, and bridging off that, 
so you have good conflict. You walk through, you talk about the situation, didn't make blanket statements about the, your spouse. But how do we draw conflict to the end? And that's kind of what I want to talk about a little bit. And really the importance of seeking forgiveness. If I have wronged Heather, I need to seek forgiveness. And first it starts with prayer. Um, coming before God in prayer and humbling your heart so that you can first receive the forgiveness, but also um, ask for forgiveness as well. And then the second thing is you need to go actually seek forgiveness. Um, and not just assume that your spouse has forgiven you, forgiven you for whatever you have done, but actually go and seek forgiveness. And when you seek forgiveness, it's important to be very specific and not general. Um, and so, for example, let's say I bought an expensive set of golf clubs, um, and I didn't tell Heather about it, and as she's looking through our credit card statement, she comes across a very expensive <laughs> purchase that I have made. This is a hypothetical. Yes, this did not actually happen. <laughs> um, that would probably raise some conflict in our relationship. And so after doing conflict well, we need to draw this conflict to a conclusion. And so for me to seek forgiveness then, I could do it in one or two ways. The first way is, hey, Heather, I'm sorry. Will you forgive me? And that may be okay, but I think we need to take it a step further and be specific. And I need to say, Heather, I'm sorry that I made an expensive purchase without telling you. Will you forgive me? And that latter really was specific and addressed what I knew what I did wrong. It acknowledged what I did wrong, and it made it easier for Heather to forgive me and not just forgive me for whatever. Um, and so there's, a, I think, very important to, when asked seeking forgiveness, to mm -hmm. be specific in seeking forgiveness. And that would give me the opportunity, if I felt like he didn't fully understand, I could respond with, you know, yes, but it really made me feel this way. And then he could more specifically even state, you know, I'm sorry that a purchase made you feel like we weren't on the same page or, you know, so it, it opens up dialogue instead of just a, will you forgive me? I'm sorry. So I think that's a great point. Yeah. Well, I hope that you guys are encouraged and learn from things that we've just been talking about and learning our, ourselves. Mm -hmm. Um, and so next, in the, over the next couple of weeks, just continue along with the Art of Marriage. Um, and we will be, I believe it's Love Sizzles that we'll be looking at the next couple of weeks, mm -hmm. um, which will be an interesting, fun topic. So yeah. look forward to keep on watching. If you haven't watched the last Love, uh, the Art of Marriage, go back, watch that. Watch my parents if you haven't watched theirs yet mm -hmm. on the Vitamix story. Mm -hmm. um, we love you guys, we miss you guys, and hopefully we'll see you guys soon.